स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so in good afternoon, everyone. So in today's lecture, which is the last lecture of our lecture series, we are going to continue our discussion on the modeling of uh, nanorod oscillators. So let me just continue our discussion from our previous lecture. So nano mechanics uh, continued segment. so in in my first example i am going to model i am going to model a double walled carbon nanotube okay so so this is this is what we are trying to uh, uh, trying to uh, this is what our goal is so to model an oscillatory double walled carbon nanotube right so first the first example that i have today is we are going to look at the interaction of a carbon nanotube let us say with a point uh, let me let me draw the figure so we have a carbon nanotube it has a radius b so it's a, a cylindrical shell and suppose i'm given a point uh, p which is delta comma 0 comma 0 and p is at a distance delta from the axis of the cylinder and <clears throat> and further uh, i assume that delta is less than b right so i want to model uh, the interaction of this point let's say a carbon atom with the outer cylinder right so so the setup is as following so consider consider an outer an outer nanotube with with radius b given by b cos theta b sin theta z right so consider an outer nanotube with this uh, with this uh, coordinates we are only looking at a tube which is a shell so it's a cylindrical shell so b is fixed interacting interacting with an interior point interior point p which is uh, delta comma 0 comma 0 so interacting with a point delta comma 0 comma 0 and since p is interior to the nanotube we so we, this inequality guarantees that p is interior okay so i am i'm trying to model an interior point interaction and further further assume that we have uh, an infinite nanotube so assume infinite infinite nanotube which means that my z is my z, my z axis is from minus infinity to infinity and my angle theta the theta is the angular uh, coordinate will be from minus pi to uh, plus pi right including the end points and then uh, let let me just write down my area element for the interaction my area element will be so any area element on the cylinder my area element da is b d theta dz my area element da is b d theta dz right so the distance of the point to the cylinder uh, so so to to evaluate the interaction energy we use the lenard jones interaction energy and for lenard jones we have to find the distance of this point p to any point on the cylinder so let me denote this by rho right so the distance the distance rho is given by we see that this is uh, b so the any point on the cylinder is 
is given by this underlined quantity. So, B cos theta minus delta square because only the delta is in the x component of the point P plus B sin theta square plus z square. Right? And this is also uh, well, so this is rho square or rho square is B minus delta B minus delta square plus z square uh, plus 4 B delta sin theta sin square theta by 2. Right? Okay, so, then so we are ready to write down our interaction energy. The interaction energy energy between between the point and the cylinder between the point and the cylinder E c is given by uh, eta c which is the interaction energy uh, number of atoms per unit area of the cylinder E c times minus a times k 3 plus b times k 6 right, where my k n my k n will be the following where my k n is the integral minus infinity to infinity of d z and the second integral is minus pi to pi times b d theta d z. Remember we are only doing an integration over the cylindrical shell. So, the radius is fixed r is b divided by rho uh, rho to the power uh, rho to the power n. So, that is my k n right. So, that is my k n. So, all I have to do is I have to integrate and find this value of k n. So, let us do that quickly because that will be required later on and before I do that note I also need to mention that eta c is the atomic atomic surface density atomic surface density of the cylinder atomic surface density of the cylinder right uh, or uh, 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 or eta c is the number of atoms per unit area ok so then uh, let us uh, separate two interactions so i need to evaluate the integral kn right to to evaluate to evaluate kn i see that uh, i separate i separate the separate theta from from z okay in my integration so so to do that let me introduce let me introduce introduce the following uh, variables introduce z to be to be lambda tan psi okay so i now have the variables lambda and psi and my lambda square is given by b minus delta square plus 4 b delta uh, b delta sin square theta by 2 essentially in my rho my lambda is the following uh, two quantities that I have uh, I have put a line above right. So, now so with these two substitutions I see that my k n so notice that when z goes from minus infinity to infinity then psi psi goes from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 right because that is where the tan blows up. Okay, so, k n comes out to be integral from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 uh, integral uh, the other integral is from minus pi to pi right. So, we have the other integral which is the theta integral is from minus pi to pi and then I have the following uh, integrand values. So, lambda secant square psi uh, d theta d psi divided by lambda square plus lambda tan psi whole square. Okay. 
to the power n. So, I have just substituted all the values for lambda and z and that is what I have. Now, when I, once I uh, simplify this, I see that this is also equal to integral from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 times cos of 2 n minus 2 of psi times d psi integral of minus pi to pi times d theta by uh, lambda to the power 2 n minus 1. Okay. So, now I have uh, I have separated out my my two variables which are psi and lambda and psi and theta right. Note that lambda contains so lambda is a function of theta itself. So, I have separated out psi and theta. Okay. So, the first integral is quite straightforward to evaluate and we see that the value is pi by 2 to the power 2 n minus 2 times 2 n minus 2 factorial divided by n minus 1 uh, factorial square pi by 2 n minus 2 by times 2 n minus 2 by n minus 1 factorial square. And let me call this second uh, second integral by 1. So, all I have to do is to integrate this integral which is given by 1. So, in my 1 I am going to do uh, another substitution. So, use use t is equal to sin square theta by 2 right and I see that my d theta variable d theta is t to the power minus half 1 minus t to the power minus half d t right. And so, in this case now 1 reduces to uh, the following integral which is 2 by b minus delta to the power uh, 2 n minus 1. Uh, so, when theta goes from uh, minus pi t is t is 1 and when it is plus pi also it is 1. So, notice that this particular integral lambda to the power 2 n minus 1 is an even function of theta right. So, that is why we have a factor of 2 and then we can change the original integral to 0 to pi. When we do that we have the following. So, 0 to pi changes to 0 to 1 for t. So, t to the power minus half 1 minus t to the power minus half times 1 plus 4 b delta by b minus delta b minus delta square t to the power half minus n d t right. Now, we are in a stage where we can immediately see that this particular integral I have written is nothing but the hypergeometric function and this is a hypergeometric function, hypergeometric function with, with my a, my a the argument a in the function set equal to n minus half, my argument b in the function is half, my argument c is 1 and my argument uh, z is minus 4 delta minus b delta by b minus delta square right. So, this is so once we write that we get that my my integral 1 my integral 1 reduces to 2 pi by b minus delta to the power 2 n minus 1 times f of n minus a half times half times 1 minus 4 b delta by b minus delta square. Okay. So, so notice that uh, this form of hypergeometric function is slightly more complicated and I am going to use my quadratic transformation discussed in my previous lecture to simplify this further. Uh, use, use our quadratic transformation transformation which was f of uh, f of a comma b comma 2 b comma z is also equal to 1 plus uh, square root of square root of 1 minus z divided by 2 to the power uh, well to the power minus 2 a of f of a comma 
a minus b plus a half comma b plus a half and a comma with the argument 1 minus square root of 1 minus z divided by 1 plus square root of 1 plus z right. So, this is to the power 2 of this function right and once we do that once we use this quadratic transformation here we see that uh, this uh, this uh, this hypergeometric function becomes this becomes b minus delta by b to the power 2 n minus 1 times f f of n minus a half comma n minus a half comma 1 comma delta by b <coughs> whole square ok so so, then I club all my results together, I have found the integrals, I have found all the other values of the integral. So, my result is that the interaction energy that we were after, after plugging in all the values of the integral is E c, <coughs> which is this is cylinder with a point <coughs> 3 pi square eta c pi 4 b to the power 4 minus a f of 5 by 2 comma 5 by 2 comma 1 comma delta by b square plus 21 by 30 32 32 b to the power 6 <coughs> of the hypergeometric function 11 by 2 11 by 2 comma 1 comma uh, comma delta by b square ok. So, that is uh, so that is the interaction the interaction of a cylinder a cylinder with with a point interaction of a cylinder with a point ok. So, then next we are going to describe the interaction of two carbon nanotubes ok. So, now I am in a case where I am in a case where I have to model model two concentric carbon nanotubes ok. So, I am modeling let us say I have an outer nanotube or, or a cylindrical shell let us say uh, with with a radius b 1. Or, or, or a radius will be 2 and then I have I have an inner shell of radius b 1 right. So, I have an outer shell and an inner shell ok. So, let us consider a cylinder. So, the setup of the problem is as follows we consider we consider a cylinder inside inside the first cylinder we consider a cylinder inside a first cylinder uh, where uh, i also further assume that if i if i put if my original axis is at an at an offset epsilon right so let me consider a cylinder inside the first cylinder uh, with with the inner cylinder the inner cylinder uh, parametrically given parametrically given by inner cylinder parametrically given by uh, epsilon plus b 1 cos theta 1 comma b 1 sin theta 1 comma z right, where where I assume that epsilon is my offset my offset from from the uh, concentric axis from the concentric axis which is the the common axis of uh, well it is a common axis of the non offsetted uh, concentric cylinders ok. So, epsilon is the offset. 
from I would say from the central axis from central axis which is a common to both the concentric cylinders. Okay. So, then further I have that uh, I have that theta is from minus pi to pi and my z is from minus z is from minus infinity to infinity and epsilon is the offset. <coughs> so, the solution uh, the solution is as follows uh, we need to look at the interaction of these two infinite cylinders. So, uh, so well of course, the, the first observation is that when we are modeling to infinite cylinders we have to essentially do an integration an infinite integration of the interaction terms uh, which is finite which we found out in the previous example for point with a cylinder, which means that the answer that we are going to get for the interaction between two infinite cylinder is infinity. So, again which means that we have to look for interaction energy per unit area right and we are going to evaluate the interaction energy of per unit area of the inner cylinder. Okay. So, so again let me just highlight what I just said for infinite for infinite cylinders the interaction energy for infinite cylinders the interaction energy energy is not finite right the interaction energy is not finite instead we are going to consider a single ring of the inner cylinder interacting with the outer cylinder. So, so instead instead consider consider a single ring consider a single ring around around inner cylinder inner cylinder consider an a single ring around an inner cylinder. So, essentially we are saying that we are going to calculate the interaction energy per unit length. So, per unit length of of the uh, of the inner cylinder. So, per unit length of the inner cylinder. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so, then uh, since z 1 so z1 is the z coordinate of the uh, of any point on the on the uh, surface of the inner cylinder so we are going to take without loss of generality that z1 is zero right so so in our model uh, we take z1 which is our lateral uh, z1 is our lateral uh, lateral uh, coordinate z 1 is our lateral coordinate of inner cylinder, lateral coordinate of our inner cylinder. Uh, we see that this we take is is arbitrary for the surface of the cylinder. So, we take we take z 1 is equal to 0 right. <coughs> okay. So, it is a ring of so essentially we have taken a ring of the inner cylinder. So, we have taken a ring a ring of inner cylinder cylinder at z 1 equal to 0 right ring of inner cylinder at z 1 equal to 0 and in that case all I have to do is uh, use our previous result for the point cylinder interaction case and integrate it over all points on this perimeter or this rim which will be 2 pi b times d theta right okay so so what i just said is in our previous example from from example 1 that we discussed few minutes back we see that now the energy the interaction energy uh, of two cylinders the interaction energy of two cylinders per unit length 
is given by E C C uh, of of so interaction energy per unit length denoted by E C C uh, for for cylinders of radius B 1 uh, less than B 2. So, B 1 is the inner B 2 is the outer cylinder radius and E C C comes out to be uh, eta C or the number of atoms per unit length of the inner cylinder minus pi to pi times uh, E C times B 1 d theta 1. Notice that since we are talking about cylindrical shells, uh, the radius is always fixed. So, this is the integration for per unit length of the inner cylinder, right. So, E C integral of this and then all I have to do is plug our result from our previous example. We see that this is also equal to 3 pi square eta C square B 1 by 4 B 2 to the power 4 and this comes out to be minus a L to the power 5 plus 21 by 32 B to the power 6 uh, L 11. Okay. Okay, where where my where my expressions l n where l n is my double integral from minus pi to pi. Note that we are doing a single integration with respect to uh, theta. So l n involves a single integration. So single integral of f of n by two comma n by two comma one comma delta square by b two square of d theta one. Note that uh, we have found the expression for L uh, L in our previous example and that was evaluated at n equal to 5 and at n equal to 11. So, all I have to do now is to integrate this, this integral which I have underlined. So, notice, so we make few observations. Note that delta by B 2 uh, delta by B 2 is strictly less than 1 because delta is a point on the inner cylinder. right? So, delta by B 2 is strictly less than 1 which means that my series expansion my series expansion of the hypergeometric function is going to be absolutely convergent is absolutely convergent right the series expansion is absolutely convergent and so what have we got so, so the series expansion is absolutely convergent uh, since uh, since what i have is uh, let me write down this hypergeometric function now so which means that ln is integral from minus pi to pi of summation uh, summation k from 0 to infinity n by 2 of k n by 2 of k by k factorial times delta by b 2 uh, to the power 2 k d theta okay d theta 1 so that is my hypergeometric function written in the series expansion form so notice that now i can I can swap the integral with the summation. So, l n turns out to be summation n from 0 to infinity of n by 2 uh, of k. So, these are my Pokhammer symbols by b 2 uh, b 2 to the power k whole square times 1 by k factorial times the integral from minus pi to pi of delta to the power 2 k d theta 1. So, all I have to do is to integrate this inner integral and put it in this summation to sum it up. Okay. So, my delta, so which means my delta is epsilon plus b 1 cos theta 1 square plus b 1 sin theta square 
and this I can write down uh, write down in this form. So, this is the most general form of the distance delta. So, delta comes out to be so delta this is from our previous example the construction from our previous example delta is all the distance in the x y plane x and we ignore the z component right. So, delta comes out to be b plus epsilon square minus 4 well let me call this as b 1 plus 4 epsilon b 1 times sin square theta by 2 and we see that now I have to integrate this. So, which means from minus pi to pi delta of 2 k d theta 1 is 2 times. So, all I do is integral. So, change this uh, e 1 integral to 0 to 2 pi. So, 2 times 0 to pi times times b minus b 1 plus epsilon square minus 4 epsilon b 1 uh, sin square theta by 2 right uh, and times uh, to the power k d theta 1 ok. So, I have d theta 1 ok. So, then let me make a final substitution by taking t equal to sin square theta by 2. So, when when I take t to be sin square theta by 2 theta 1 by 2 I see that this integral changes into 2 times b 1 plus epsilon uh, square uh, well square and then power k. So, to the power 2 k integral 0 to 1 uh, t to the power minus half of 1 minus t to the power minus half of 1 minus 4 epsilon b 1 divided by b 1 plus epsilon to the power 2 times t uh, to the power k d t right. Okay. So, notice that again we have been left with a hypergeometric function this integral is a hypergeometric function with the argument k equal to a equal to minus k my argument b equal to half and my argument c equal to 1 and my z is equal to 4 epsilon b 1 divided by b 1 plus epsilon square ok. ok. So, then uh, I can rewrite my my integral well there will be a pi as well after all the substitution. So, when I do that I have so I have the following uh, result. So, the result is 2 pi b 1 plus epsilon well I am not going to write this because this is already a hypergeometric function. Now, then the, the one final step in this integral is I am going to convert this hypergeometric function with very complicated argument to a hypergeometric function with slightly uh, simplified argument using quadratic transformation. So, again using using our quadratic transformation transformation I am uh, well as as shown in my previous lecture right I am going to see that my integral from minus pi to pi delta of 2 k d theta 1 reduces finally to this particular integral 2 pi b 1 to the power 2 k times f of minus f of minus k minus k comma 1 comma epsilon by b 1 square ok epsilon by b 1 square. And I finally, see that that l n is 2 pi uh, summation k from 0 to infinity k from 0 to infinity n by 2 to the power k. Uh, n by 2 to the power k square times b 1 by b 2. So, I have put in all the results together to the power 2 k times 1 by k factorial f of f of minus k minus k 1 comma 
epsilon by b 1 square. Okay. So, so, note that there is one last piece of observation note. So, I have found the value of l n and then I plug all these values of l n into these expressions that I have found to begin with. Right? There is one last piece of observation. Note that the argument here of this hypergeometric functions they are negative, right? which means that the hypergeometric function is going to terminate after finite number of terms. Right? So, if this is my argument A, <coughs> since A is less than 0, then the hypergeometric function is represented is represented as a terminating is represented as a terminating a series okay and i see that f of minus k comma minus k comma 1 comma epsilon by b1 square is summation j from 0 to k uh, minus k of j the pokhammer symbol uh, square so this is square times epsilon by p1 to the power 2j by 1 by j factorial okay okay <coughs> so that is what we have and then we plug all these uh, hypergeometric functions into our uh, into our previous result to to figure out the value of l n's and then finally, the interaction energy. <coughs> so, now we are now quite set to describe the model of oscillatory two oscillatory uh, concentric carbon nanotubes. 